this video, I'll show you how to get a shallow depth of field using your smartphone camera. In photography and cinematography, a shallow depth of field is great for separating the subject from the background. You can also make your images more dreamy looking with background bokeh, especially with lights behind the subject. It's not as easy to achieve as with a DSLR or dedicated camera, but it can be done. So let's find out how. Every tool and every camera has its plus and minus points. A DSLR can have a big sensor and the possibility of a greater range of high quality lenses. But a smartphone is an all purpose device that many of us find indispensable for daily life. It fits in your pocket so you can snap or shoot away whenever the opportunity arises. Smartphone cameras are improving year by year and with increasing sensor size, multiple lens options, powerful AI and HDR software, smartphones are getting closer and closer to matching a DSLR or cheap cinema cameras like Blackmagic. But there's one major thing missing, a bokeh creating shallow depth of field. They've tried software driven live focus solutions where the camera tries to mask the subject and blur out everything outside the mask. And I've spent hours doing this by hand in some of my smartphone films. So I understand how difficult it is. This software solution isn't quite there yet. But before we look at software options, let's look at the simplest way of doing it. Well, get close to the subject. Smartphones generally have wide lenses with small sensors, which means a long focal depth. In other words, pretty much everything is in focus. This is actually really useful for general snapping and video shooting because you don't have to worry so much about focus. Put simply, the closer the subject is to the camera, the more out of focus the background will be. So if you put a subject a few centimeters from the lens and focus on it, this can be pretty cool, especially when you're shooting a cup of coffee, for example, or some subject with small details. However, we often want to film people and people's faces. But if we place the camera close enough to a face to get a blurry background, it won't fit in the frame. So while this technique is easy to do, it has limited applications. Having said that, it is an important thing to understand, as all lenses work like this. The closer the subject, the blurrier the background. Now the second method for shallow depth of field is to add a telephoto conversion lens. While the effect on depth of field is pretty minimal, it does make some difference. Now I have these two teleconversion lenses, and if you have never seen one before, they sit over the lens of your smartphone camera and convert it to a different type of lens. This is a beast grip times three telephoto, and this is an Ulanzi times two 65 millimeter. And they both narrow the field of view as well as give you a bit of extra background bokeh. I've already made a video about these lenses, so check that out after if you're curious. Now, many smartphones include software for faking a shallow depth of field. On Samsung phones, there is live focus for still images and live focus video for video. Essentially, what this software does is try to mask around the subject and then put a blur on anything it decides is not the subject. So this is a pretty crude way to add a shallow depth of field look. But that said, for still images, it is actually quite effective. And look closely and you'll spot that it's fake, but that's probably fine for social media and other casual kind of uses. Now, live focus video is improving all the time, but because the subject is moving, it means the software has to keep adjusting the mask. And this is Samsung's live focus video. And when I switch it to the black and white background effect, you can see exactly where the mask is. And if you have an iPhone, you might want to look at an app called Focus and Focus Live, and that's spelt F-O-C-O-S. And this app gives you a more sophisticated fake bokeh. From what I understand, it uses the phone's depth sensor, like the LiDAR scanner, for example. And this is rather than simply drawing a line around the subject. And this means you can even pull focus using this app, which you can't do with these other fake bokeh programs. And this can even be done after you've taken a shot, which when you think about it, could be a revolution for cinematography in the future. If you really want dreamy, shallow depth of field in your smartphone videos, one way to do this is to add an actual DSLR lens to your smartphone. 
you'll need what's known as a DOF, or depth of field, adapter. Adapters like this were actually invented many years ago to be used with prosumer digital video recorders. And this is because while these cameras were very affordable and shot great quality video for the time, you could not add your own lens. British director Gareth Edwards works in Hollywood now, shooting blockbusters like Star Wars and Godzilla, but he started out shooting with a prosumer Sony EX3, which could only shoot up to HD, but at the time, uh, that was considered uh, you know, high quality for something that was affordable to the masses. And for that cinematic shallow depth of field, he used an adapter to add 35mm lenses. A couple of companies have made adapters for smartphones, and the main ones are Beast Grip and Ulanzi. While the Beast Grip has a recommended retail price of about $270, the Ulanzi sells for about $150, so a fair bit cheaper. How does a depth of field adapter work? Well, they're actually quite simple. Inside here is a piece of frosted glass. And when you mount a DSLR lens to this side, it places the image on this glass, known as the focusing screen. And once you set that up, your smartphone camera needs to focus on this focusing screen and take the image from there. So it's important that your smartphone lens can maintain focus at such a short distance. For example, the B-Script depth of field adapter Mark II is not compatible with the new iPhone 12 Pro Max, as that phone cannot focus close enough. And when I use my Samsung S9, I have to set the focus to the absolute shortest possible distance, which is actually a little bit concerning because I'm worried that the glass is too close and it's giving me a slightly soft image. First thing you need is some way of mounting this to your smartphone. The adapter has a 17mm thread, so any cage with a 17mm thread should do it. You need to make sure the adapter sits over the smartphone camera with the lens right in the middle to avoid vignetting and uh, aberrations. There's also this screw on the top, so the barrel of the adapter can rotate if you loosen the screw because we want that glass to be perfectly level inside here and we can adjust that and then tighten the screw so it doesn't move. The final step is to add a DSLR lens. While the previous version of this Ulanzi was designed for Sony E-mount lenses, this one is actually designed for Canon EF mount lenses, but you can always add an extra adapter for different lenses. Ulanzi recommends using a fast, full-frame lens with manual focus. Uh, you won't actually be able to use autofocus with this adapter though. Now, when you're all set up, you will see that the image is upside down and using it this way is actually quite hard, although you can probably get used to it with practice. However, if you use an app like Filmic Pro, MC Pro 24PS, even a free app like Open Camera or Hedgecam 2, there's a setting to flip the image. And now it's the right way up as normal. When you add all this stuff in front of your smartphone camera, it's going to reduce the amount of light going in. When you're shooting outside in daylight, this is probably a good thing, as you might not need an ND filter. But if you're shooting in low light situations, then this could be a bit of a problem. Smartphones already struggle in low light due to their small sensors. But filming at night might not be possible, or you will need to bring extra lighting to power your shoot. There may also be imperfections in the focus screen which can show up in the video. I don't mind that too much, as it adds a bit of character, but if you love your video looking clean and perfect, this might not be for you either. What do you think? That's it from me, I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next video.